Today we learned about logarithms and their derivatives. The first thing that we remembered was that the logarithm is the inverse of exponentiation. So if log of x is equal to y, that means the same thing as saying e to the y is equal to x. So if I put a number in for x and I'm trying to figure out log of x, I think, well, if I raised e to some power and I got x, what was that power? That's going to be your natural log of y. So in particular, if I want to find the natural log of e, that means e to some power is e, and of course, e to the 1 is e. If I want to find the natural log of 1, that means e to some power is 1, well, e to the 0 is 1. And if I have log of e to some power, whatever that may be, this is just going to be that power of e. You can again think that, okay, I raised e to some power and I got this, or you can think log and e cancel because they're inverses. We saw what the graph of natural log looked like. We saw that log crosses the x-axis at 1. As x gets smaller and smaller and closer to 0, log becomes more and more strongly negative. And as x becomes bigger, log becomes bigger. Also, we note that because they're inverses, the graph of log x and the graph of e to the x are just mirrored about this line y equals x. We also learned some rules for dealing with logarithms. If I have the log of a product, I can rewrite it as the sum of the logs of the things I was multiplying. Similarly, if I have the log of a ratio, I can pull apart that ratio and write it as log a minus log b. And if I have log of something to a power, I can pull down the power. Now, of course, log should exist for all of these things. So in particular, a and b should be positive. We also briefly saw the base change formula. I can change the base of my logarithm. If I want to find the log base b of a, I can pick any positive c that I want. And this is going to be equal to log base c of a over log base c of b. So for instance, this is going to be equal to natural log of a over natural log of b. It's also going to be equal to log base 2 of a over log base 2 of b. We can differentiate logarithm using implicit differentiation. If log of x equals y, I want to find y prime. But remember, this is the same as saying e to the y is equal to x. So I can differentiate both sides implicitly. Well, the right-hand side is just going to be 1. For the left-hand side, we have to use the chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But I don't have x, I have y. So I have to multiply by the derivative of y. Then this tells me that dy by dx is 1 over e to the y. But e to the y is the same as x. And in fact, we can say something more general. If I have the function log of absolute value of x, then its derivative is 1 over x. Now remember, if x is positive, log of absolute value of x is the same as log of x. If x is negative, we have to put these absolute values in there because we can't take the log of a negative number. If we think about the chain rule, this means that the derivative of log of a function that's not 0 because we can't take the natural log of 0. Well, if that function were x, the derivative would be 1 over x. But it's not, it's f of x, so we have to multiply by the derivative. And this is going to be useful because I know the logarithm of a function. And when I use a logarithm, I have all of these nice log rules that I can use to simplify my expression. So that brings us to logarithmic differentiation. Suppose I want to differentiate this monster of a function. We know how to do it using the chain rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule, but it's going to be extremely painful. I mean, think about the quotient rule with that low d high. And when you differentiate the top, you have to use the product rule. And you have to use the chain rule because of those exponents. So a faster way to do this is to go via a logarithm. So if I take the log of both sides, it's going to look like this. 
And the benefit I get from this is that now I can pull apart what's inside that logarithm. Remember, multiplication becomes addition, division becomes subtraction, and exponents become coefficients. So I pull down that 10 from e to the x times x plus x. And since these first two up top are multiplied, I add them, pull down the 8. Notice I'm not, I'm not differentiating here. I'm just simplifying. I'm using my log rules. I'm not actually changing what this right-hand side of the function is. Now I'm going to differentiate both sides. Remember, if I have log of the absolute value of something, its derivative is 1 over that function, and the top is the derivative of the function. So there's my derivative of my left-hand side. Now I'm going to differentiate the right-hand side. So this e to the x over x goes to the bottom, e to the x plus x, and on the top I get its derivative. Again, this e to the 2x plus cosine of x goes on the bottom, and on the top I get its derivative, and cotangent of x plus cosecant of x goes to the bottom, and on the top I get its derivative. Now if I want to find f prime of x, all I have to do is multiply both sides by f of x. Now it's not going to be simplified, but that's fine. So here's f of x, and I multiply it by the right-hand side of the function. It's not pretty, but it's my derivative. The last thing we can do with logarithmic differentiation is we can differentiate a kind of function that we couldn't differentiate before, a function to a function. Suppose I want to differentiate this function. Well, I don't know how to do it right now, but I can set it equal to y and take the log of both sides. Now I can simplify and differentiate implicitly. So for the left-hand side, I take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And for the right, I have to remember my chain rule. So now to find y prime, I just multiply both sides by y, which was x to the x squared plus x.